2012 higher level question 5 U values question part A in this question we're dealing with an uninsulated solid concrete ground floor with a sand cement uh, screed now in this question we have to calculate the U value and then part B will be calculate the heat cost for this floor now to start off this question most important write down the question number so all of these u value questions are question 5 after we've this done we'll start drawing the diagram looking at this floor so to look at this floor we need to look at the different elements of how the floor is made up so in this floor we're told there's a sand cement screed, thickness 60 mil. Then we have a slab, which is 100 mil. We have a damp proof membrane, which is a thickness of just 0.25 of a mil. And we'll see how that affects in the table. Then we have sand, which is 50 mil. We have hard core, which is 225. And then we have our subsoil of 300 mils. Now, so you'll notice that we've one, two, three, four, five, six sections, and we'll probably have to calculate for these six sections since we're given measurements for each of them. Now, what we're given in the thermal data, we're given resistance of internal surface, so that's our ISR. We've resistivity of our fine screen, which is smaller, then we have conductivity of our concrete floor slab, K. We have conductivity of our DPM. We have conductivity of our sand binding. We have conductivity of hardcore. And we have conductivity of our subfloor. Now, so to start off this question, we need to draw a diagram. So the diagram goes as follows. Now, this is just a sketch. So we draw our screed. Now we can put in a symbol of just dots for our screed. After our screed, we have our hardcore, or we have our concrete slab. So we put in a symbol for concrete. Now, underneath our concrete, we have a red line for our DPM, which in any future questions would be referred to as a radon barrier. Underneath the radon barrier, we'll put in a level of sand. Then there's a section of hardcore, so we'll draw in a symbol for hardcore. And then underneath, we have a section of subsoil. So we just draw a symbol for subsoil. Now, the next stage then is to label. So start off with ISR, so we don't forget it in the question. Next, screed. At this stage, we put in our measurements. So measurements for screed says in the question 60 mil, so we change that to meters, so that now turns to 0 0.060, and that's in meters. Then we have our slab, which is 100 mil, so we change that to meters, so which is 0 0.100. Then the next section, which is our DPM, and Changing this to meters changes to five decimal places. So it's 0 0.00025. And we have to calculate with this five decimal places because of the DPM being such a thin layer. Underneath our DPM, we have sand. So our sand is 0 0.050. Next section, hardcore. And 
and our hardcore is 0 0.225 and then our last section then is our subsoil so and our subsoil is 300 ml so it's 0 0.300 now looking at this we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so that refers to the amount of rows that we'll have in our table so it's a good idea to draw out a sketch first of all and then at least we will know what size table to make how many rows to put into our table so there are seven sections there so we'll draw a table with eight rows because we need we need a table for the top line of the table so one two three four five six so that's eight. We'll divide it into sections going across. So our sections going across will be thickness, our component, thickness, resistivity, conductivity, and resistance. Now in all these questions we're looking for total resistance. So when we're finished with this question we need to have a figure down in this right hand corner. So we'll fill out our table. So component capital T for thickness multiply small r for resistivity divide by k and then capital r for resistance now to start off we work from the inside all the way out so we've isr we have screed we have slab dpm sand hardcore and we have subsoil now in this question we do not have any ESR for external surface resistance since we are dealing with a floor we're looking at subsoil so they're calculating for 300 mil subsoil and underneath the subs underneath the 300 mils they're saying that well they're uh, estimating that the heat won't travel down any further so in this question we've no ESR now to start filling out our table ISR there's no thickness no resistivity no conductivity the resistance given to you is 0 0.104 and that is got from the table in this point here now next we're, we'll place in each of our thicknesses so screed is 0 0.060 slab 0 0.100 dpm 0 0.00025 sand 0 0.050 hardcore 0 0.225 and then our subsoil is 0 0.300 now in this question we're given resistivity for the screed so we write in 0 
seven one zero. Oh. We're not given conductivity, thus we can calculate for our resistance. For each of the rest, we're given the conductivity, so we can start cancelling out resistivity for each one. Um, the slab conductivity is zero point one six zero. Conductivity for the DPC is zero point two five zero. Conductivity for sand zero point one six zero. Conductivity for the hard core one point three three zero. And then conductivity for the subsoil, 1.800. When we get to this stage, it is a matter of using our calculator and inputting the information. Now, when we're doing any U-value question, we have thickness in the first or in the first column of figures, so we put this figure into the calculator first. Then we either multiply or we divide depending on the information given. So looking at how we calculate for the screed, it is point, point zero 0.06 multiplied by point 0.71. And the answer we get on the calculator is to four decimal places. We change everything to three decimal places as the ISR in all of these questions is given to three decimal places. So each of the answers on this right hand column should be to three decimal places. So if we look at the value given for the screed, it's going to go to three decimal places. So it's 0 0.043. And that's looking at the fourth digit. If it's five or above, you round up. If it's four or lower, you leave leave it at the third decimal place. Now, each of each of the rest of the sections are calculated the same way. The only difference is instead of multiplying, we're dividing each of them because they're all given in conductivity. So the resistance of the slab is 0 0.625, the DPC which is a thickness which is 0 0.00025 divided by 0.25 Now, this appears on the calculator, so when this appears on the calculator, it's 1 to the power of 10 to the power of minus 3. Now, when we see this in the calculator, we have to change this to a decimal place. So, to change this to a decimal place, it is moving our decimal place 3 paces. So, if we write it out, underneath just as an example to show you what it looks like if it was 1 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 3 what we're going to have to do is move our decimal place 3 places so this goes once twice 3 times so our decimal place is here so The answer when you see 10 to the power of minus 3 is just move your decimal place 3 times. So the answer in decimal form is zero or 0 0.001. So that fits into the table here, 0 0.001. Now the reason for the figure being so small, we're talking about a small piece of plastic so it's going to have very little resistance. Now we continue on with sand. 
so 0 0.05 divided by 0.16 so the answer we get here is 0.3 Now, hardcore point two two five divided by one point three three. Now, look, there's three decimal places again, so zero point one six nine, and the final point three divided by one point eight. So looking at this, and this occurs in the calculator quite often, on the scientific calculator, it is point 0.16 with a dot over the 6 means the 6 is reoccurring. So what that means is it's point 0.16666 reoccurring. So we have to go to three decimal places. So the answer would be point 0.67. We're almost at the end. Once we have the right hand side all filled up, it's a simple matter of just adding up total and getting a total resistance. So, very carefully in the calculator, place in each of the figures. And the answer we get is 1.422. Now, that's the total resistance. Now, once we've total resistance calculated, we need to find the U value. So the first step in calculating the U value is to write in our formula. So the U value is equal to U equal to 1 over RT. So U is equal to 1 over 1.422. So U value is equal to 1 divided by 1.422. And the answer we get for this U value is 0 0.703. Now we have to place in units, so the unit is W forward slash meter squared degrees Celsius. Now that's the answer to part A of the 2012 higher level U value question.